Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about William Atchison, who was the main perpetrator in the Aztec high school shooting. I'm going to read out a few newspaper articles that I found regarding this case, um, and then, you know, I'll give you my analysis. And I want you to consider the notion of belonging and the importance of belonging, uh, like, you know, to a group or having friends or, or, or just being a part of something i think that's the theme today but i'll give you my thoughts on that later this took place on december the 7th 2017. now first i'm going to look at the letter he wrote i'm going to read it out to you i know the writing it was kind of hard to figure out what he's trying to say because he writes like a tortoise but he starts by saying bye my sincerest apologies for all and any of suffering or something I may bring you the something of my actions, right? But he's basically apologizing. However, it's clearly obvious that my pathetic excuse for a life goes something and the amount of pain and isolation and absolute fucking boredom, is it? I'm not sure what that says, is not worth living a life for. I will never belong in this world. It is said he was into Trump material, right wing material. This is nothing to do with Trump. This is nothing to do with right wing extreme, uh, extremism or right wing theory in general. That was just a vehicle for him. He was just angry. He goes on to say, Mother, you are fucking awesome. When you aren't drunk, then you're a difficult person. Or when you are drunk, then you're a difficult person. And something as all the hell. You're a serious problem. Stop. I'd miss you though. Breathe. You're a psycho. So fucking awesome. I will miss our childhood. Wayne, fuck you. I do sincerely thank you for all the something. I can't make out the rest. I'll leave it there. You guys can read it. I can't make out the rest. But it gives an indication that he just felt alone. So. In school, um, he was known as, uh, William that is, William was known as a choir boy with a stutter who wore a trench coat and played video games. Some teased or ignored him, while others tried to befriend him. But during his time at Aztec High School and beyond, William Atchison had a secret life. See, years before this shooting, this high school shooting took place, William was in contact uh, with other online school shooters, including a young man who committed a mass shooting in Germany. So it seemed like there was like a, an online group, right? Like a, like a Facebook page or a Facebook group. I don't mean Facebook per se, but just to give you an indication of what it may have seemed like, or maybe other kids who were troubled, who consider it a high school shooting therapy group or i don't know right shooting anonymous i don't know whatever you want to call it william also practiced dry runs of the shooting in a video game and i think that's actually telling now we all have seen or heard of stories of mass shooters like columbine aurora uh, parkland i've never read one where the guy did dry runs i'm sure there is and i'm sure i've missed it but I think that's interesting. He was certainly committed. And the day of the shooting may have had special significance as well. December the 7th, the anniversary of the 1941 attack by the Japanese on Pearl Harbor. Investigators learned a possible relative of the shooter had been killed during the Pearl Harbor bombing. So I guess this may have had significance where he thought I'm going to get revenge or... I am going to let out all my anger on this day in in homage, paying homage or in in solidarity uh, with my relative who, you know, died on this day or whatever. Maybe that's what he was thinking. I don't know. Now, authorities have delved into the details of Atchison's life as part of the investigation into the shooting. They have reviewed their past contacts with him, including an FBI visit to the house where he lived with his parents. The San Juan County Sheriff's Office, New Mexico, State Police and the FBI are starting to wrap up their inquest according to Detective Lieutenant Carl Lincoln of the Sheriff's Office. 
As for a motive, Lincoln said investigators believe Atchison's main motivation was notoriety, but added it is possible law enforcement officials may not be able to truly determine his motivation. Now, going to the incident itself, right? William walked into Aztec High School disguised as a student and he was armed with a handgun. He opened fire in the upper level hallway of the 8900 building. The school custodian, Thomas Emery Hill, chased after the government shouting, Active shooter, lock down. Uh, Katie Potter, a 74 year old substitute teacher, heard the gunshots and the following loudspeaker announcement calling for a lockdown. As a substitute teacher, Miss Potter did not have the keys to the classroom, so she ushered her 17 students into the classroom office and barricaded the door with a couch. Atchison fired multiple rounds through the office wall and then shot himself. San Juan County Sheriff Christ, uh, Ken Christensen sorry, credited her swift action with saving many lives. I believe he's referring to uh, uh, Katie Potter. Um, now, two students were confirmed dead, along with the shooter. State authorities confirmed that there was no other injuries reported. Officials said that Aztec police received a call about the shooting about 8 a.m. Students at the time were in class and heard what they thought was someone punching the lockers. As the noise became louder, they realized it was gunfire. Teachers and students hid in locked classrooms until they were told by officials to walk out of the room toward the back of the building and the parking lot. They were later picked up by their parents at McGee Park. As the police delve into the whys and hows, authorities were searching for ways to prevent future school shootings. For Aztec Police Chief Mike Heal, that mission became a passion. Atchison, who, if I haven't mentioned, was 21 at the time, when he entered Aztec High School on the morning of December 7th, he shot and killed 17-year-old students Francisco Paco and Casey J. Marquez before he killed himself. The event didn't just happen out of the blue. For years, the shooter gained social support for his violent thoughts about school shootings and racial and social prejudices from online communities that discuss and even celebrate those topics. So, this is what I mean by belong, right? You are a pro we are a product of our environments. Of course, not in its totality, but our environment plays a big part and shapes us into the people that we are. William did not fit in to whichever environment he was in. School, work, if he was even employed, at home, with his family, extended family, he just didn't fit in. But because you have these online communities, and because, for me, the most significant factor is that it is behind a screen. So you're not worried about what people think of the way you look. You don't need to look at someone else and think, do they like me? Do they mean what they say? Uh, in, in this context, being devoid of tone and being devoid of body language actually works in your favor because your insecurities are the reason why being behind a barrier, which in this case is a computer screen, allows you to build relationships. Now, in seeking fame, he befriended other budding murderers. His extreme words in online rants, including a threat to shoot up his old school in 2012, alarmed some chat participants online, but didn't bring authorities to his door until years later, when he convinced agents in March 2016 that he was a harmless online troll. He discovered that Atchison had been in contact with other school shooters. Atchison was in contact and talked with Ali David Sonboli, the 18-year-old who shot and killed nine people in a Munich, Germany uh, attack in a mall on July 22, 2016. He practiced his attack in an online video game designed to practice a mass shooting event. Atchison likely played an online video game in which players build versions of malls or schools to establish a time frame for a shooting. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, in a lot of these online games, uh, not necessarily Call of Duty, but these Call of Duty-like games, you can actually build your own worlds to a degree not not with, with no real intensity but you can build like your own environment to which you can go and shoot and you know do whatever so 
I see he tried to definitely tried to create his own world. A little more than a month before the shooting, he bought a gun and additional magazines. He was able to purchase a handgun as he was an adult with no criminal history. That's completely fine. I don't really care for the gun laws. That's not my fight, right? But if he had tendencies to shoot people and kill people, like like it's a, uh, in a way that's a thought crime right should you be held accountable should you be penalized for your thoughts and that's where it gets a little bit tricky because uh, in america we very much live in a numbers based world everything we see everything we do has been reduced down to numbers um whether you watch the nfl numbers on the tv you watch CNN, Fox News, numbers on the TV. You watch any kind of TV, there's always numbers, 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 numbers. Human beings have been reduced down to their numerical value. That is what a background check is, right? They look at the numbers, they look at your history, and they make a decision. However, the problem with numbers is that it doesn't provide context. So, whilst I probably agree with you that no one should be penalized for their thoughts, it's, it's hard to justify giving him a gun with no criminal history when there was a way or authorities did have a way to check his online uh, content, if that's even what you want to call it. Anyway, about 82 shell casings were recovered from Aztec High School, which leads investigators to believe that many shots were fired by Atchison. Law enforcement of officials also are investigating a theory as to why Atchison chose to shoot himself. Investigators believe that Atchison shot himself after hearing an Aztec officer fire shots through a window to breach the building, which was on lockdown. One thing is clear in hindsight, the shooter left an unmistakable and alarming online trail pointing to future violent acts. And this is what I mean, right? Perhaps, if there isn't already, but perhaps if someone is engaging in online material that could be concerning then maybe the police should have some kind of alert or radar system to keep an eye on it but then again that could be an, an invasion of privacy so it's a thin line right it, it is an interesting debate now a day before the shooting he posted on the online community kiwi farms kiwi farms i guess is uh, a website or something uh, he he put the words praise be to Allah. Now the reason why he did this is so people think it's uh, an Islamic terrorist, um, which is pretty hard considering this guy's name is uh, William Aitchison, and you know he's never engaged in any kind of Islamic fundamentalism. Um, now in terms of the classmates, uh, Tanner LeBlanc was take was taken aback when he found out Aitchison was the shooter who committed the murders at the high school. The teen director of the Boys and Girls Club, this is Tanner. Uh, found out about the shooting when a friend called him and told him Billy was the shooter. Uh, Will, uh, for those, I'm sure you know, but Billy is a nickname for the for the name William. It was between spring 2011 and spring 2012 where a friend of William's by the name of Tanner LeBlanc, who tried to be friends with him and tried to get him to fit in, he said he noticed a major change with Atchison during this period. He said... Atchison began to show up to school with eraser burns and burns from placing salt and ice on his skin. Tanner has kept Atchison's family in mind as he heard people make negative remarks about his former friend. He said he understands a tragedy occurred with the death of Fernandez and Marquez. Still, he doesn't want people to forget that another family not only lost their child but must live with the knowledge that the child killed two people and this quickly ties into my theory of output right where um like it seems fernandez marquez who william shot and the parents of william they are left to themselves to get over this right as i've said there's no trial or compensation or 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 media notoriety that can help them feel better this is something they have to do by themselves and that is what is very selfish about Atchison's act he killed himself because he doesn't he didn't have the stomach to live with the consequences and Tanner hopes people don't punish uh, William's parents for his actions 
Hannah said he drifted away from Atchison after his junior year and didn't even know he still lived in Aztec when the shooting occurred. So now we come to my thoughts and conclusion and there's a number of factors regarding this, right? Um, you could say notoriety. I don't think that was his uh, driving factor, to be honest. If you look at, I mentioned Parkland, Aurora, um, and I guess you could say Anders Breivik in, was it Norway? I think Norway or Denmark, one of them. Um, school shooters who are still alive, mass shooters who are still alive. For me, they do it for the clout. That's even the right word. Notoriety, clout, fame, whatever you want to call it, right? You could argue the Virginia Tech shooter probably did it for fame too. But I don't think that's the driving factor, right? I think the reason why they do it is because they felt alone. They wanted attention. They wanted to belong. See, I believe we live in a world where we are left to our own devices, right? We're born, we grow up with our parents. By the time we hit puberty, we're what, 9, 10, 11, 12? So many hormonal changes going on inside of us. We can't make sense of what the hell is going on, but we don't really have any guidebooks on how to get through that period. I mention that because if William, at the age of 21, was thinking about shooting people, this isn't something random that happens overnight. This must have been something that happened from day one. So from the moment he enters his institution, right, which would have been high school or elementary or preschool, whatever it is in America, I don't know. So perhaps, and again, I'm just guessing, I'm just giving ideas out there, so making suggestions. Perhaps from the moment he was in, you know, high school, uh, or, or sorry, uh, uh, I don't even know what to call it in America. In England, they call it uh, middle school, right? Uh, or primary school. From the moment he entered any kind of social setting where he was by himself, then I think he just felt awkward. He was unable to maintain relationships. I don't think he knew or had the mental intelligence to form friendships or how to have a conversation or like when you observe children right uh, you can throw a bunch of children in a in a in a room have a bunch of toys and they'll just play with each other there's not much communication go well there is probably some communication going on it's very limited but they have this inner sense of like they know what to do right they don't need to it, it just happens naturally where kids just sit and play by the time you get to your early teens, 13, 14, you then start to formulate and have the ability to think for yourself. And that's where you start comparing yourself to other people, right? In this world or in this image saturated world that we live in, right? We can't help but compare ourselves to other people. I think when he got to that stage, he was looking around, he was seeing other, fr uh, other people having friends, etc. And I think any times he tried to forge a closer bond he was either rejected ridiculed made fun of or it could have just been one isolated incident it could have been where when he was in whatever uh i don't know grade five or six or whatever and he tried to make a friend or it was the first second day of class uh school sorry he was trying to talk to someone in class or whatever and someone made fun of him right and then from then on he just closed and became a recluse it could have been just in innocuous it could have been that small and that 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 feeling of hate and rejection could have festered inside of him all the way till the age of 21 and it seems everything he did um by the age of 21 confirms that right um as i mentioned earlier his entire personality was being seen through a pc screen so you don't get to see how he looks you don't get to see how he talks you don't get to see how tall he is you don't get to see his face his eyes the color of his hair um what clothes he's wearing uh, what kind of backpack he has you don't see anything of him so he doesn't have to feel any kind of judgment that's what rejection is right with rejection you are being judged that you are not good enough right that's how we take it that's why rejection is so bad because we feel like we are being told you're not for me or whatever the context may be right so behind the screen he doesn't have to face any of this and to him those were the benefits subconsciously i don't have to face any of that 
but at the same time, I can still fully be myself. And oh, look, there's other people just like me. Oh, I want to be friends with them. Oh, now I belong. Oh, this is fantastic. Where have you been my whole life? Etc. 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 Unfortunately for him, right, this online universe was full of people who wanted to kill other people because they just hated everyone. I have a very similar complex, right? Not to that severity, but I have been ridiculed and rejected my whole life. Whether it's true or not, that's how I perceive my history. When people make fun of me, when people have rejected me, when people tell me you're not going to make it as a content creator, right? When people show hate of me, that's what drives me. That's what fuels me. But I think the difference between an adult and a child because uh, William did act as a child. The difference is, is when you're being rejected and when you're being hated and when people are making fun of you and, and you're just trying to make it in this world, right? The hate, the pain, the suffering, you turn it around and you make it your fuel, you make it your desire and you use that as a way to make your life better. That's what I've done, right? I remember as a kid, the hierarchical structures of my family right i was always that one kid that was left behind when other kids would go out to play and they'd be taken out i'd be the one that people wouldn't take i'd be the one that people made fun out of a lot i'd be that one kid where i never felt like i was i belonged right and i knew i knew britain was never going to be my future if i go to middle school now year seven and year eight i see a bullied all the time not physically verbally I never, ever, ever belonged. And when I got to the grades after that, up until grade 12, year 12, sorry, um, I knew that my future was never going to be in England. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know who I was. And for the majority of my life, I've always felt like I'm not good enough, which is why any time I've ever started something myself, right, I've never finished it because I've never had the belief to finish it because I've kept telling myself, you are not good enough through all that mental conditioning as a kid with all the aforementioned examples parallel that to William where throughout his whole life he was told you're not good enough he finally finds a space that tells him he is good enough so then he becomes that environment and then unfortunately he carries on or he, he, he engages in the attack that it seemed like he thought of for a while whereas me what i do when i feel um that nobody has trust in me or faith in me or etc is i'm like okay watch what i do just keep watching because you're going to look at me one day and you're going to be like wow i want to be like him you know I, I i mean i don't that that that's just a metaphor or a, or or something i use in my head to to turn the 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 painful words of others right to my advantage it's a, it make, it drives me it fuels me do you know what i mean right so the only conclusion i can come on to this is that william was immature stupid dumb alone blind callous um and the fact that he killed himself shows that he just couldn't live with not what he did but he couldn't live with the reaction as he was afraid of being rejected. Thank you for listening.